Hello, everyone, and welcome to yet another episode of The Boring Show. Uh, mm -hmm. I am Matt. And I'm Andrew from The Flutter Team. And uh, what are we doing today? We're going to talk about shared preferences. We're going to talk about shared preferences. We're going to do a little mm -hmm. bit of pop-up modal dialogue-y sheety stuff. Yep. So we got a little bit of the back, you know, back of the house part of your app, a little bit of the stuff up front. Uh, we'll answer some questions that you guys mm -hmm. have put into the YouTube comments on previous episodes. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, but let's let's dig into it. So um, we have our Hacker News app that we've been hacking on mm -hmm. for a while. And I thought it would be good to show off shared preferences because this is something that just comes up for every app just about, right? Like everybody's got little tweaks that they need to store locally, uh, little preferences for the user and, and get back. So yep. let's start by taking a look at the shared preferences package real quick. So the thing about shared preferences is that um, it is basically a way to store key value pairs. Mm -hmm. Called shared preferences um, probably comes from Android, where we have the shared preferences piece. Mm -hmm. um, historically used to store, to store preferences, but you can actually use it as a data store for pretty much um, anything you want in a sort of a key value style mm -hmm. way. I mean, it's yes. not SQLite. Um, you're not going to do major querying on it, but it's a handy way to store um, JSON blobs of data. Little, yeah, little bits of data. Mm -hmm. Nothing, nothing huge. I think the limits on how much you can put in there on both on both iOS and Android are pretty small. Um, all those but video you, clips I should yeah. have been storing share <laughs> yeah. preferences. That yeah, don't, okay. don't yank the camera roll into it. I don't think that'll work. Uh, just you, you encode it and stick it in a string field. Um, you heard it first here. Yeah. You, you encode your images and store them in shared preferences. <laughs> there you go. Um, so to use this functionality uh, with Flutter, uh, there's the shared preferences plugin, which is one of the rare ones that actually has a perfect 100 it does. in pubs scoring. Uh, again, always look for the score in the packages when you go mm -hmm. to pick one out. Uh, so I'll tell you a lot. This one, as you can see from the uploader list, a lot of Googlers on here working on this one. Um, a lot of people that work like 10 feet from me. Um, so it's being worked on by the team a lot. I have used mm -hmm. this in apps before and, and, and still use it today. Um, and we're going to put it to work right now. So let's go into mm -hmm. our pub spec and do what we do when we add packages. Oh, so we're just going to stick it in pub spec. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so this is going straight into down. our, let me scroll up, straight into dependencies. Mm -hmm. And uh, this will be fun because we get to see how well I spell, I type preferences over and over again. Everyone's going to get to enjoy that. So let me save that, and we'll do a little packages get. And I think I have the app running right now. I'm going to go ahead and kill it because there's yeah. there's got to be some native code in here that's not going to get hot reloaded. So let's rather than confuse a running instance. So that's I now have the plugin though. So it's right there. Let me go ahead and run it now. This is going to do a full rebuild, update the in this case, iOS code that's in the app. Uh -huh. Even if you do things like a, a full restart, um, uh, that will restart the app and push all the Dart code over. But if you've added a new package that has native Android or iOS code, mm -hmm. you kind of want to rebuild it because otherwise you're going to end up in a, uh, in a funky state. Yeah, where you'll have the Dart code but not the code underneath it. So Dart will be calling to, to no one. <laughs> and madness thus yeah. lies in that direction. Yeah, and that's where the dragons are. All right, so hopefully this will come up just fine. There we go. Mm -hmm. So we're back up. Let me go ahead and close out the pub spec. And so now the question becomes, how do we access shared preferences mm -hmm. in a way that makes sense? And so there are a lot of state management approaches for um, for Flutter. You know, a lot of people just use scope model. There's uh, my I wrote a library called Reblock, which a few people are using. A lot of people are using Block, which is what Hacker News is using, uh, or our Hacker News app is, mm -hmm. is using here. Um, so let's, since we're already using block, why don't we just make another block to handle the preferences? And that'll be kind of cool because we can show off how you can use two blocks in the same app and they sort of you know, separate areas of concern that way, which is a good, uh, good thing. Multi block. Exactly. Okay. We will Great. plex our blocks. Gonna, um, it's going to end up like Lego. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to make a new file here. I'll just call it like prefs block. Dot dirt. Go ahead mm -hmm. and throw that in there. Um, I will add that to Git later myself, because that's how I roll. Um, you command line fiend, you. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just so elite like that. Uh, and to prove how elite I am, I'm just going to copy oh, all wait. this code right. from the really? Hacker News block. It's going to be a short episode. Yeah, if you're just, just going to cut and paste Philip's just code. Just dump it into mine. Thank you, Philip, for yeah. making Andrew look great. Thank you. <laughs> um, king of all things state management, Philip. Uh, is the king of state management? Is his new name? Okay. Yeah. Um, and so let's just start, you know, the magic of renaming things. Uh, let's make this one a 
refs block error. There we go, and we can rename this one to, you guessed it, press block. Press block. And so some of you maybe uh, coming to the, the show might not be that familiar with block. Um, do you want to sort of give a brief, you know, way up overview of blocks? Oh, um, real quick. Way to put me on the spot. Well, yeah. yeah. Um, Trivia quiz time. Yes, great. Not having played with block for a couple of months. Um, <laughs> So block is a method by which um, you can handle state primarily through streams. Mm -hmm. So within your block, you can have um, uh, streams of data going out. Um, and you can use a stream builder widget then to have your UI um, rebuild itself um, automagically um, when new data it comes out through the stream. Mm -hmm. um, you can have syncs inside the block um, to receive data going into the block, and with the inside the block itself, you can then handle um, storing of the state, the um, sort of business uh, business logic -y type stuff as mm -hmm. well. And so it's a neat way of um, sort of um, accessing sinks and streams of data, and then using Flutter's um, built-in support for Stream Builder to handle your UI refresh. How was that? Was that good? That was great. Okay. That was way better than what I was going to say. Okay. Um, if my lips are dub synced over with Philip's yeah. voice, I've clearly messed it up, <laughs> and uh, he's correcting me on that. Um, yeah. So like, it's a, it's a fairly simple and flexible pattern block. Mm -hmm. It's it's really mostly about any inputs to the block should be streams coming in from your app, and any outputs going back to your app should mm -hmm. be streams. And inside the block itself, you handle business logic. So. You know, for the, the Hacker News block, which you can still see on my screen because I haven't deleted this code, there's streams of articles going out uh, av as they've been loaded. I think there's a sync for setting a story type um, mm -hmm. so you can flip back and forth. And so you would get that input of story type from, your, from the app, and then in response, the block would emit, oh, here are the articles as of right now in the form of a stream that you then put in the stream builder. So I'm going to throw in a... Uh a, a spanner in the works because you've got this thing called behavior subject, which doesn't yes. sound like a stream to me. So why, behavior, why, yeah. What is behavior subject? Behavior subject comes out of RX Dart, which are the ReactiveX extensions for Dart uh, that have a lot of additional code uh, for dealing with streams. They sort of build on top of Dart streams to provide mm -hmm. a lot of extra stuff. One of the things they provide is this thing called behavior subject, um, which is very much like a Dart stream normally is, except when you subscribe to it, it always has a value to give you. Always the last value right. that was pushed into the stream or an initial one if it was given. Right. So that's that's really handy because when you're going to build widgets, you don't have to worry about what happens if my stream doesn't have a piece of data in it yet. Or you missed the last one and now you're going to have to wait for the next one to come along. In this case, it will always give you, oh, this is the last thing here. You can have a copy of this one until something new comes along. Mm -hmm. it makes it very convenient for Flutter. So. We're going to have to have some streams, a stream coming out of what the current preferences are. Yes. So the app can use them, mm -hmm. right? Because we're going to use those in stream builders to change the UI based on the user's preferences. Indeed. Um, we're also going to need, yeah, <laughs> this bit. We'll need this bit. We'll need a sync so that some control somewhere in the UI of the app can set the preferences. And then in between those, we'll want to load them from shared preferences and store them to shared preferences. Wow. Everything's a stream of there data. There we go, yeah. Uh, so we have an in, we have an out, and then we have right. a little bit in the middle where we're saying, whatever the current value is, let's get it into shared preps. And that's the very definition of black box. Yeah. <laughs> um, for those of you who are new to Flutter, um, there's a lot to take in. You have like the reactive pattern, you have your stateful and stateless widgets. And then on top of that, we're now talking about blocks and streams. If this all sounds a little too much, um, what we would recommend you look at is something a little simpler initially, conceptually, um, for handling your state manager, your app. Mm -hmm. um, I'd recommend looking at scope model. Um, it's, um, it's less of a mind flip coming from um, sort of more traditional MVC style mm -hmm. of, of UI programming. Um, but once you've got the, uh, the grasp of the basics, um, definitely check out streams because streams can give you a really powerful and elegant way to handle uh, management of data in a Flutter app. So you can pick yeah. and choose, but 
If you're just starting out and this sounds like way too much, check out Scope Model. It will give you uh, uh, an easier path to, uh, to doing some pretty um, robust state management inside your Flutter app. Mm -hmm. And if you end up outgrowing it, you just come back and we're, we'll still be here. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, so we're going to need some kind of object to represent the preferences that are getting sent out. Well, what preferences are we going to put in first? Oh, that's what a good are point. we going to what are we going to pref up? <laughs> we, need, we need something to only show me happy news in yeah. hacker news. Can, can um, we do that? So we have Do we have a TensorFlow model for that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this news is too sad. Yeah, let's do sentiment analysis and uh, turn that on and off. Um, so we could turn off just some piece of the UI, right? Like we could turn off, I mean, the comp, this is a text widget, right? That'd be dead simple to turn on and off. Mm -hmm. We could turn the web view potentially on and off as well. Let's mm -hmm. go look at the main. I wish you hadn't um, said dead simple. Yeah. Because now it's not going to work. Of course not. <laughs> you could just find some obscure bug when you hook a web view up to a stream builder or something. Because um, we have in here build item. Where's the web view? It's got to be one. There it is, container web view. So we could. We could like turn this container on and off. Yeah, we could just hide the whole pref. container. Yep. Yeah. Do you want to do that? Uh, yeah. Why don't we do that? Okay. So let me go back to my prefs block. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna have preferences state. So we're gonna have in here a boolean. It's gonna be an immutable object. So every time there's an update, you just get a new instance of this that comes down the stream. So it should be immutable. We'll call this uh, show web view. Mm-hmm. And let's uh, let me do that. And then we need a const constructor. So press state. And then we'll require that you set show web view mm -hmm. in there. And why is that a const constructor versus a regular old constructor? Uh, so that if we give it a literal, uh, which I'm probably going to do right when I replace this line, we can get a compile time constant out of it. So some handy optimization mm -hmm. for runtime. Yep. Sorry. Yes, handy optimization at compile time for runtime. Uh, OK, so that's, we'll have one preference. It's really. Really, really just a pref state, but we'll, you can add to it later. Um, so we're going to have a stream of these, or behavior subject of these, that'll be our output mm -hmm. to the app. So we can do... And a behavior subject of these is just um, uh, a stream controller, which will give us a stream where we can add Boolean values, mm -hmm. um, true or false, which will then let us um, render our UI um, as appropriate when things are toggled on and off. Mm -hmm. Put a little comment there and make that a little easier. Oh, so, okay, so we're always going to show web views to begin with. Emily, well, yeah. Emily will be yeah. happy. Okay, and we're not going to have any articles in this block. Nope. We are, okay, so this is going to be our input. This is where they were doing the input with the story types. I'm going to rename this to, um, let's see. Oh, story type controller. Um, this is going to yeah. be what? Um, web view toggle. Yeah, what do we call this? Web view show controller. Well, my show web, view. web views. Yeah. Show web view true or false. Okay. And then this will be just a boolean. So we can have multiple. If we had more than one value in here, we could have separate inputs for each one, mm -hmm. and then just sort of combine that into this object that then gets passed out as the ultimate state mm -hmm. of the block. Um, one of the nice reasons for doing this is if we have ten preferences, and we only update one preference, then the UI is only going to change that part of the um, part of the UI which is controlled by that single preference. Mm -hmm. So it allows you very fine grained control um, by breaking it down this way. Okay. And then you notice I'm making these streams uh, privately, so I need to get some put some getters on here. Mm -hmm. So let's do press state current press. And I'll capitalize that correctly. Okay. There we go. So now people can get that out. And I'll create that. And then we'll need to get a sync. Mm -hmm. Let me just get so rid of everything between me and the sync. Current and then this prefs be... is the web view, the one web view pref we have. Mm -hmm. OK. I, kinda, I almost want to call this sync, but uh, I'll just leave it as pref. And that'll be the sync from show view. So if you haven't heard the term sync before, by the way, just because I hadn't before I really started with Flutter, it's just the other end of the stream. You know, the str we think of the stream as the, the part you get stuff from, and the sync is just the part you put things into. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to need both here. And let's get rid of some of these methods. So initialize articles, not going to need that. Get article. 
get articles and update, get ID. Okay, none of this is going to stay around. Mm -hmm. Stories type, don't need that. Okay. And this is yelling at me because we're not closing this, so let's fix that. Yep. Uh, Whenever you deal with um, stream controllers or behavior subjects, you should always make sure in your code, whenever things are disposed of or whatever, that those um, that mm -hmm. those streams are appropriately closed down. Otherwise, they're just going to be hanging around and eating up resource. Okay. And okay, so in our, do we have any work to do here? Yes, we would. We this is where we would want to trigger the load to get the stored preferences off the disk. So yes, we need to, when it's first run, mm -hmm. pull the preferences from shared preferences. And then every time we push something into the sink, we want to both save that and push the new value out in the mm -hmm. stream, right? Right. Yep. OK, so let's start with this. So we're starting it by default with a true. Mm -hmm. And then we'll trigger a load at that point in the constructor. So if somebody needs to draw right away before we've loaded from disk, we still at least have something they can, you know, the widgets can be rendered with. And then we'll come in here. And this will need to be asynchronous because shared preferences, they involve mm -hmm. I.O., so they're asynchronous. So yep. I'm just going to put a future void here. And let me do this, and we'll see if you think it's a good idea. This will be fun. OK. Um, oh, 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 dear. Not yet? <laughs> Not yet. So let me, OK, I'm going to do this, and I need to, is this, OK, format Ooh. this. I've missed something here. What am I doing? Uh, you forgot your, your, your brackets. For a method. Oh, good. My parentheses. Yes. Like That's that what they're to, called. to use yeah. the proper syntax. Yes. yes. Just like a. Okay. Yeah. I do uh, this for a living. Just, yeah. uh, I like your new. I like your new C um, style of curly braces oh, under the method. <laughs> Kicking it old school here on the boring show. All right. I'm gonna break up begin and end from my Turbo Pascal days. Um, Okay, so shared preferences. Uh, we need to import that. And yep. let me get rid of the imports we're not using, using uh, Control Option O. Come down here. For those people who like their Android Studio. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, IntelliJ. Or Android Studio. Yeah. Keep buying these right now, I assume. <laughs> so we can import shared preferences here because it's in our pub spec. Mm -hmm. So we can get that, which means we can use it down here. So I'm going to say final shared perhaps equals, and I believe it's a singleton interface, like get instance. Yep. Yeah like that. And then I go, oh, that's mm -hmm. a future. Yes, yeah, so you're going to wait That's back. where I'm going to yep. wob it, because I'm Elmer Fudd all of a sudden. All right. Um, start doing Looney Tunes and functions. <laughs> Final uh, show web view pro, um, equals shared press. I'm waiting for the bit that you think I'm going to hate. <laughs> the anticipation is growing. <laughs> OK, I'm going to. I'm going to hard code this. Normally, you wouldn't want to. I'm going to hard code it for now. Uh, this is just a key that you give shared preferences so it uh, knows what data. You know, it's a key value pair. So you give it a key yep. just to tag the data. And it will be. Ooh, look at you with your, your if it's null, do something else. Coalesce operator, the double equals, yep. You even know what it's called. Coalesce, eh? OK. So uh, at least I think in .NET, that's what they called it back when I worked in .NET. Um, <laughs> maybe I have a different name of Dart, and I just completely, you know, Thousands of people have been led astray. Hopefully not. Welcome to the boring C sharp yeah. show. C sharp, C sharp, C. <laughs> <sharp. laughs> okay. <sighs> Keep going. Since we're talking about the operator, what it does is if the first part is null, then it substitutes the second part. So if yeah. I go to shared preferences to get a Boolean, and shared preferences is like, I don't have a Boolean by that name, so here's a null, then this code will go, oh, I'll substitute a true. Mm -hmm. It's a very um, nice way of not having to do mm -hmm. if not not equal to null, right. then do something else. OK, so we get this. And then we're going to mm -hmm. need to put this out on the stream. So I would do uh, share, uh, do current press. OK, you can do it here. OK. That's the part that I wasn't sure if you would like. Um, Did you notice my stern? You're <laughs> going to do this here. <laughs> the inflection uh -huh. at the end. Yeah, you got that. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think show web view. Let me flip over. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Excuse um, me. And so we're going to put a new pref state object in here with show web view in it. Okay. Just like that. And so that's the thing I was I was curious about. For some, like I don't mm. want to await on anything in here. It's a constructor. You shouldn't be waiting on anything. 
in a constructor. That just feels wrong oh, to me. So I'm sort of I kicking see. off the process, and later it will come back. But I, it just feels weird to me to have... I can't have yeah. an await in here, because what am I going to put async on this? Is that even possible? Yeah. Uh, no, not in a constructor. Yeah, so it's, it would immediately... You'd have to have that. a second wrapper method. That would then call that, this. That would, right. Yeah. So, so that's why I was thinking to structure it this way. Or you could pass out the value of shared preferences and do a dot then. You could do a dot then too. And then that would keep it cleaner because you're mixing up your concerns. Yeah. But, and, you know, it's, it's, it's fine. We'll be covering these kinds of details in our upcoming uh, YouTube series on asynchronous patterns in Dart. Uh, that was a nice segue. Well, yeah. Yeah. Way to plug your new show. There you go. Shot that this morning. Uh, so that's coming up. Um, all right. So that's load shared preferences. Okay. So that should get us some stuff and put it in mm -hmm. the stream. One thing to mention in shared preferences as well is uh, Andrew's using the sort of default shared preferences, mm -hmm. but you can have multiple shared preferences and pass in a name, really? I believe. Okay. Interesting. I believe there's a way to do it. Why not? All so right. I've played mm -hmm. around with that. All right. Anyway, have a Story look at front the, of the video. Yeah. Um, documentation. Okay, so we've got something of a block here, right? You could put, uh, oh, I need to listen. You do need to listen. I need to listen. There's a few more things you need to do. So uh, I need to listen for the inputs on uh, this. Uh, so this is show web pref, which is your. Wait a second. That's what I need mm -hmm. to do. Listen on the stream. So that's going to give me a Boolean indicating whether the user wants me to show the web view or not. And so I need yep. to take that and do stuff with it. So this method is going to get invoked anytime a new uh, Boolean comes down the stream for the show web view pref. That's mm -hmm. the input to this block. And I would need to save, which does not exist. Um, save prefs. Yep. Save new prefs. And uh, I would be giving that a pref state. Like that. Okay. And that method doesn't exist, so I should probably go make that. And this is also going to have to be async because just getting the shared preferences is. Oh, of course, yeah. Save new prefs. And that takes a pref state, a new state, async. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to steal this first line because I'm just efficient that way. It's definitely not laziness. And then we await putting, so we're going to put a Boolean in here now, right? So we're going to say... You do, but why do you have to await it? Because you kind of just want to fire or forget, right? That's, I think it's so that they, you know... Oh, wait, I don't have... Hold on. Share press okay. dot set. Yeah, so it's a future bool. I think to indicate whether it worked or not. Oh, you can get the value. Okay. But if um, you're not going to do anything yeah. with the value... So it's... it's uh, you could throw an error if it fails, actually. Because we have that error, one, so we can we can get to that when we have time. I was thinking. Uh, I'm just padding it out yeah. so I don't have to do any coding. <laughs> you just keep going. This yeah. is great. On today's four-hour boring show, <laughs> we Even completely more. recode everything in the entire world. Even more boring show. Yeah. Um, so, oh, probably should give it a value, right? Yeah. Date dot show web view. Okay, so that's going to take the boolean out of my preferences. Mm -hmm or out of my object, stick it in shared preferences. And should we put it through? At that point, we want to emit. We have to emit that back out through. We do, because a user will update it, and we have to reflect that in the UI. So this is where our code is getting even less dry. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll emit that new state, just like that. Yep. So now somebody will give us a Boolean saying, I want to toggle this particular preference, and we'll send out the entire updated preferences object as a result mm -hmm. after we make sure it's been saved to disk. But you're pretty close to having most, uh, to having everything covered now, I think. You're loading in it. And then Assuming all of this runs. We haven't really run any of it. Well, I'm just, you yeah. know. So we need, to, yeah, we need to wire this into um, the app now, right? We do. So you need to inject your block. Yeah. So, which is what this has been doing so far. Um, so right now the app is not using something like an inherited widget to propagate the block down the tree. Instead, it's been just put, you know, using it as a parameter and sort of drilling it down into the stateful widget that is homepage. Mm -hmm. So I'm, rather than significantly refactoring this, I'm just kind of going to go with that for now. 
Uh, I think at some point we will want to take a step back and, and do a, a serious refactor of this bit. Yes, there is a refactoring on the horizon. Yeah. So I'm going to make a preferences block right mm -hmm. here. Uh, and it's like, I don't know what that is. What are you talking about? There we go. So I got the import statement up there, mm -hmm. which we can now see. Um, and now I want to give it to this app, which isn't going to know anything about it. So I got to go up here and make field to hold this. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to rename the other one while I'm in here through the magic of Shift F6. Let's call this a hacker news block. There we go. Hacker, and then we can, that's hacker new block. You've got the S. You know, uh, Sorry. it's uh, no time for plurals in my life. What can I say? I only deal with the singular. Yes, he only does it once and <laughs> once only. Um, Unlike all that non-dry code you wrote yeah. earlier. <laughs> Get the dig in. Um, okay. When's the next Google guys? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Ding. Uh, <laughs> um, okay, so I'm passing now the block into my app, and then I'm going to need to drill it down into my home page as well. So I'm basically okay. going to do the same. This is why we need a refactor. Yeah. This is where inherited widgets are mm -hmm. a god. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Um, and uh, yeah, if you do not want to be passing things down, the check out inherited widgets. Um, we use them all the time. Yeah. But okay. not here. And so now I'm going to add. So just I'm basically just drilling. Yeah, the, drilling this property down here so I can use it in this widget. Um, and let me make here, I need to send it in. Hmm. There we go. Mm -hmm. All right, and let me, cool, I can format this up. I believe if we save this now, actually I'll need to do a hot restart because I think I, I need to modify this as well. So this needs a... You'll need a hot restart because you changed the stateful widget? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, I want to disregard my state. Format that there up. Um, we still have a comment from Emily. Do we close block subscriptions here? Um, well, we should. I don't think you can there because this will run the app and then it'll close them and then the app will go on. Uh, meanwhile, this is just yeah. uh, lost its mind on me. So let's do a. Oh, you've uh, lost, yeah, yeah, free start. Yeah, let's do, okay, yeah, just completely wigged out on me. So let's see what we got if I rebuild this. It's well, not actually using what the What should happen yet. is um, it should run as it did at the very beginning um, because we have no way of switching. The, what we could do is you could hard code in true or false and see if it disappeared. So, yes, Into we could. Just to try it. Because it's starting with true now, and we could put, while this is loading, I'll go back. We could go back here and sort of simulate this just as a one-off and put like a future delayed in there so we could see it. Oh, that's clever. And then like five seconds later, it'll change the value for us and a new one and we can watch the stream builder, hopefully get rid of the web view. Wow. But it ran, so that's, that's job one, is job the app still run, so that's good. Now we're gonna get real fancy yeah. with uh, future delays. Can't wait to see how this works out. All right, so that block goes into the stateful widget in the widget part, it's not part of the state, so it's not gonna change. Yep. But we can still access it in the state object. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to now... This is a method in the state object right yep. here. And we're going to have to wrap this in a stream builder? And that's what I'm thinking. So we'll do a stream builder yep. of prefs state. Yep. And then we will give this a stream. Mm -hmm. So this is where we're using that block that was passed in. So yep. we can go um, prefs block. Dot what curve. did you call this? Oh, oh, wait, hold on. It's in the widget, not in the state object. So that's mm -hmm. how I get that. And I think it's current preps. There you go, okay. And then we can come down here. Instead of a child, now we have a builder. So it's a stream mm -hmm. builder. So we're going to say builder. And that gets a context and a snapshot of what yep. the current state of the stream is. And this is going to get ugly for a second. Let me just clean this up. I'm just going to put a return in front of this. Mm -hmm. Now and comes the balancing of the that. brackets. Even oh, worse. So okay. Close. All right. 
Yeah, there are ways to do this sort of thing. I know to do it with Visual Studio Code. All right, hold on. Mm -hmm. Oh, what is that spirit? What is that doing there? Hanging out in the oh. middle of nowhere. Yeah, that's clearly wrong. Okay. Good on a sharp eye there. So this is where I need my thing. And that goes to that. Hey, auto reformat. And this needs a comma. And now. Yeah. Syntax. Tricky yeah. stuff. Normally using a little like wrap with widget thing works out great. When you have a big chunk of it like this, it can get difficult. Yeah. Okay, so this is just gonna return a container, but we don't necessarily mm -hmm. want to do that. No, so we want to check our snapshot. So if yeah, I'm gonna just do, I'm gonna you could put a cool ternary in expression in here, but I'm not. Let me just keep it clean yeah. uh, based on what just happened. Uh, so if snapshots has data, mm -hmm. uh, show web view equals true. Oh. We can do it like this. Then return this container. Mm -hmm. And what, what does that thing keep coming in there for? Interesting. Um, then we return the container. Otherwise, uh, return an empty container. We'll just do that. Everybody's favorite placeholder, the humble <laughs> container. Does so many jobs. Um, and you can see I got some I got some drift here. In the real world, again, yeah. we would want to refactor this. Um, but we're, we're coding really fast here. So let's... So snapshot, again, you've now got a single question mark. And so mm -hmm. what happens, snapshot.data is null. Mm -hmm. So if it's null, it does null equals equals true, which is false. Which is false, and so it'll return a Could you just can do container. a null comparator to a Boolean? Uh, yes. OK, I didn't know that. That's I cool. think. Well, we'll find out. We could always pull up Dartpad and find out. We could, uh, <laughs> we, we could always pull up Dartpad and find out. <laughs> we might do that in a second if this breaks. Uh, part of this that's interesting, though, we should never have a null snapshot because we're using that behavior subject that always has a value to give. And you did give it a value at the beginning. We'll never get a null, so I might actually want to test that somewhere yeah. later on. There, okay. Yes, okay. Let's go ahead and save this and make sure. So if you do a hot restart because you've messed around yeah. with this right, state again. Let's get restarted. Um, let's see if we actually have a web view. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, so we have a slight yeah. problem with our serialization. Uh, we've had this trouble, I think, before. We had one where Hacker News had an ID that didn't have an article. They deleted a, an article, mm -hmm. and it hadn't fallen out of the API for the, the list yet. Mm -hmm. And I think they recover from it just fine. It just shows up as an, as an exception. Okay. I'm pretty sure we've dealt with that before. Feel free to correct me in a comment if we hadn't. Um, but here we go. So we're showing... Web view, right? Go okay. View. Cool. So let's now go into our prefs blog and let's do what you were we were talking about earlier mm -hmm. and start messing with this and say, let's let's do this. We're going to pretend that we load. Um, we do a delayed future. Mm -hmm. And future dot delayed is just going to say this is going to get run at x number of seconds or whatever mm -hmm. you defined yep. in the future. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we'll do that, and then. So we're just going to wait on nothing for ten seconds, and then I'm going to do false. Current prefs dot add. Well, yeah. Theoretically, so, uh, you should be doing save new prefs because it would save it in. Well, I was just pretending that but we did a really long load yep. from disk, uh, just for some. So what this is going to do by default, it's going to start with the seed value of true. Mm -hmm. So you'd see this, and then. 10 seconds later after this future is done, it's going to be like, oh, I really meant false, and a new value for the preferences state is going to come down the stream with false, and we should see this web view disappear. So I'm going to save this. Hang You're on. looking really. Yeah, because some... shouldn't this current prefs be inside your curly braces in your future? Well, I'm just awaiting day? it here. Oh. I could have put it in there too, but okay. when I do these sort of hacked up, this is basically thread.sleep, you know? Don't do thread dot sleep. <laughs> don't don't do, do that. By just the way, don't do that. Yeah. Um, this is a really great use case way. for um, like uh, a, a unit slash integration yeah. test. Yes. Okay. Well, Let me go ahead and do a restart then. Okay. Okay. So in theory, oh, still we got that null article. Okay. We'll go past that. I'm gonna open this up. Okay. Should so get a web view. Showing the web view. Um, we are now oh, gonna make polite conversation. 
<laughs> well, that was a quick 10 seconds. Well, we yeah. were messing around with your error. It works. Yeah, there we go. So it worked even faster than we were prepared for huh. as human beings. Oh, and I, oh, I just killed the emulator. <laughs> or the simulator. <sighs> it's been oh, a long professional day. software engineer, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. <laughs> I wish we were professional broadcasters. <laughs> <laughs> just talk about other people doing this stuff. Okay, let me put this back. So we know that it's at least working. Uh, oh. I did actually launch this simulator. Okay, hardware. I think I was oh, we got to create a new device. Uh, I think I was using the XR. Um, let me uncomment these. And then I'm thinking we can. Okay. Yeah, we've been going for we've been going for over half an hour here, so we have mm -hmm. some time to mess around with the widgets now. Um, a little bit of time. We could put in something to toggle that preference. I think would probably mm -hmm. be the, the first thing that we can try doing. Um, well, the first thing we're going to need is um, some way of bringing up the preferences. Yeah. And that bottom navigation bar mm -hmm. at bar thing is looking uh, is looking like a good candidate. Okay, let me see. All right, let me see. I'm going to go in and look at uh, what directory I'm in and my git status here. I get the feeling he's going to git push and then make me yeah. git pull. And you then... could git pull. Because well, you, you use VS Code, and uh, I know I don't like using an editor I'm not uh, used to. So let me just add this stuff. Mm -hmm. There we go. And then we do git commit using my alias. Um, oh, that's a nice alias. Yeah. Here we go, and then we'll do a git push. I think I have an alias for that, too. Not looking at your password yeah. typing. It's just the word ginger four times in a row. Um, there we go. OK, so we can we can switch to your computer. We talked about doing okay. some questions, too. You want to talk over Let's some? do questions we first, do that still because on this we, one. Okay. Might, um, we might get a, let, okay. me, let me do my git pull while I'm at this. Why don't I tell you what? Why don't you? Yeah, you can do that. And uh, so we got we got a few questions. Um, let's start with um, Patrick posted one. When can we access smart devices like Google Chromecast or audio? When can we access smart Which devices? I thought, yeah, I love this kind of question because like I haven't actually looked that up because it hasn't come up in my life yet. But I was like, ooh, I wonder. Can we do that already? Like, is there a way? So. There's the Cast API for iOS and Android, mm -hmm. and it should be conceivable. Inconceivable. No, no Princess Bride. Um, <laughs> you killed my Chromecast. I tricked it out. Conceivably, you could wrap the mm -hmm. Cast APIs in a plugin, mm -hmm. um, and then the other part of Cast is you do your HTML, CSS for the rendering of the TV, which is mm -hmm. independent of the app. Yeah. So conceivably, um, we could write a plugin, or you could write a plugin um, to make that happen. Yeah. Again, I mean, pretty much anything you would want to do in, in, in Android or iOS native development, you can do with Flutter. There's just that little bridge that you end up writing uh, in between. Um, so I just Googled this real quick. Um, and uh, Eric has had an, an open bug for this for a while, um, saying basically exactly what you just said. All, you know, somebody just needs to write a plugin. So I just wanted to. To make the point again, we talked about this when I did a, a boring show with Philip about the importance of coming in and letting us, letting the engineering team know what's important to you. You know, if you if you want a cast plugin, if that would be really helpful for the app that you want to build, come in here, look for a bug. If one doesn't exist, file a feature request, and if one does exist, come in here and give it a thumbs up. So this has 28 right now, mm -hmm. and when they have their planning meetings, you know, the the engineers and the Flutter team, they will look at that and see, okay, what do people really want? Um, and so those those votes matter. Um, I wonder, is there anybody? Yeah, we have. Oh, somebody has started working on a plugin too. So somebody out in the community. Cool. Uh, three cheers for open source. So that's something that you might check out as well. Mm -hmm. um, if this doesn't do exactly what you're looking for, maybe become a contributor and help this person build something out. Um, there you go. All right. Next question. What do we have? Um, from Shane Style, uh, why is the APK size of Flutter so bigger? 70 megabytes in my phone. Uh, this is a common yeah. misconception, and it's easy to make. Um, yes, the APK size um, or app size is 70 meg when you are in debug mode. 
because we push the Dart VM for hot reload, we push a whole bunch of um, uh, infrastructure for testing, for the overlays and whatnot, mm -hmm. and so it's um, pretty huge. But when you build for release mode, then we compile down to ARM machine code, mm -hmm. um, and we strip all of that out. So your 70 meg Hello World app should turn into, what are we at at the moment? I think a minimal example is it's four point something, the impact of Flutter? Or if that's the, or if that's the whole app, I can't remember. Yeah, we're, it's we're, in the we're, four point something on Android and close to that on iOS. Yeah, we're getting close to the four mark. So mm -hmm. that 70 meg is something you should never ship in production because it is um, running in the VM, it's interpreted, it's not going to be as performant, and it's massive. Always do uh, what Flutter build APK or Flutter build IP. You just reminded me of something, actually. Oh, did I? Doing these, the instructions, we have guides for this exact thing. Oh, good. Um, and so, yeah, the things that you were just in the pro before I cut you off and you were giving people useful advice. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, before you release an Android app or an iOS app, there are guides on Flutter.io uh, in the docs telling you these are the steps to take your app that you've been building and testing and debugging and making a release build that's slimmed down uh, and ready for the App Store or the Play Store. Mm -hmm. uh, including some details like on Android, you might want to run ProGuard and have a ProGuard config. Uh, so some of those, those things are in there too. Um, yeah, good. So yes, 70 meg, you'll see that only in debug mode. Never mm -hmm. use that for um, sticking into the um, Play Store right. or the App Store. Okay, uh, <laughs> this should be fun. We also have uh, Rohan who asked six questions, one after the other, so maybe we can lightning round these. This, mm -hmm. this should be interesting. Uh, number one, how to handle performance issues like memory leaks. Um, we can touch on that real quick. Um, where is, um, oh, I'm not actually running Shoot, my app died. If it hadn't died, there's a thing down here to launch the observatory, which has even yet more performance tooling um, than is included in IntelliJ. Mm -hmm. We're also, uh, in a few weeks, we're going to have a, a boring show with a guest who is one of the developers of the dev tools. Yep. And so we're actually going to be walking through some of those exact things. Like, how do you profile an app? How do you look at what the, the virtual machine is doing you know, at that moment and things like that? Am I dropping frames? Why am I dropping frames? Mm -hmm. So we're going to have a lot of that stuff uh, coming up in a future episode. Cool. Let's see if we can do two through six here. When can we have, expect Flutter widgets like QR scanners, in-app video players from YouTube, and other streaming services? So QR scanner is in the Flutter ML Vision package. Oh, that's right. Which is part of the Firebase ML kit. And I believe there's a QR mm -hmm. scanner in there. Um, not too sure about the YouTube. We have we have a video plugin, but it's not going to do YouTube out of the box. I don't think so. No. No. Um, I think that will eventually that yeah. will happen. There'll be a uh, a YouTube package. Yep. Um, um, yes. Yeah. And other streaming services. Um, go go make noise. Tell them you want it. Show up on their forums and be like, Hey, I'm a Flutter person. I'm working on an app with Flutter, and I'd like to include your service. Um, mm -hmm. Please please help me with a plugin. Uh, let's see, can we expect code snippets or example code for uncommon widgets in the Flutter documentation? Um, we should have some kind of snippet or sample for most widgets. Um, certainly, the ones mm. that people are going to use. Um, we are, you know, with Widget of the Week, we're we're always looking for widgets uh, that we haven't talked about yet and things like that. I mean, I think we're eventually we'll get around to to most of them. Mm -hmm. uh, in the meantime, you can always be the change. And you know, if you have a widget that you think doesn't have docu enough documentation, submit a pull request. Go in there, add some, add some sample code, add some, add some uh, explanation. Mm -hmm. uh, that kind of thing is much appreciated. If you think documentation is lacking for any particular widget, file an issue and give it Oh, out. yeah, file a feature request, too. And if there's already one, give it a, give it a thumbs up. Um, can we expect a video article addressing the common yet annoying pitfalls when using certain widgets like Feature Builder, et cetera? That's... Do we, well, we have a widget of the week for Future Builder, I uh, think. We do. But um, we are always on the lookout for producing mm -hmm. um, uh, new content. In fact, Andrew was shooting some this morning. Yeah. Um, so we will be talking about uh, futures and asyncs in the mm -hmm. not too distant future. And will that include Future Builder? It'll touch on Future Builder. It wouldn't be exclusively about Future Builder because uh, it's more about the patterns of, of using futures. Uh, I would. To be honest, I mean, if, you, if you're really looking for something like that, odds are the community has probably already made the type of article that you're looking for. You know, there's, um, there's no um, wall 
around Flutter. Like the people, the people outside are making resources that are often just as good, if not better, than the ones that we make, because they're also good engineers and writers and th and and so on. Um, and so there are definitely people out there. You can find them on Twitter, find them on various blogs and things like that, um, writing articles about this exact topic. So um, I would, uh, yeah, just cast a cast a wide net. You might find what you're what you're looking for. Yep. Um, good practices to reduce build size. I think we already kind of touched on that a little bit with the release guides. I'd recommend those. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> and the perennial how to get access to a dash, which is our stuffed mascot uh, for research purposes, of course. <laughs> Uh, the best way to get access to a dash is to I get involved in the community, you know, start doing talks and things like that, and just eventually people just end up with a dash somehow. Yeah, they, they kind of replicate. Yeah, um, they appear in the weirdest of places. Yeah, it's like um, if you or you know corner me or Andrew mm -hmm. or Emily yeah. um, whenever we're <laughs> at a conference, and if we yeah. have one, don't keep bothering us until we give it to you. Yeah. So uh, That's yeah, it's not an just, invitation to harass us for yeah, dashes, but just, just we we carry around. them around with us and. There's a lot of people asking for those. Yeah, uh, they are pretty popular. Okay, so that's those are our questions. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and start. Are you you ready to go? You got to get yes. Back. Okay. Some slight issues in that we're hitting this serializer problem and it's not loading um, mm. uh, the pieces here. So I am going to let's um, try um, a full restart and see what happens. Okay, so here is our deserialize. Okay, so that's fine. Here's our deserialization okay, problem. Okay, so you hit the same thing. Let me... I've, I've switched off the breakpoints mm -hmm. here. Um, so this is running. Perfect. So we have, where are we going to put this? Um, uh, here's, mm -hmm. here's, <laughs> this is totally off the cuff, by the way. Um, slightly prepared. <laughs> Not so slightly prepared. That's generous. <laughs> um, let's, let's look at the bottom nav bar and try to stick a new okay. um, yeah. icon in there. So yeah. I'm going to search for. Let's get rid of this because this is in the way. So we search for a bottom navigation bar. Ooh, look at that. Okay, so we got these. A convenient list. A convenient list. Thank goodness. And I'm going to stick in a new item, and I'm going to call this preferences. And please let us have an icon for preferences. Pregnant woman. <laughs> There's got to be a settings. That will, uh, uh, yeah, settings maybe. <laughs> I mean, that's an important thing for some, you know. No, no, and absolutely. Yeah. It's just it's funny when you're looking for preferences, yeah. the things that pop up. I was once, this is my favorite, hot tub. <laughs> <laughs> Getting back Flutter, on track. You're soaking in it. <laughs> um, oh, just lay back and let oh the widgets goodness. flow. The things that, um, yeah. yeah. Huh? Ooh, look at that. That is kind yeah. of awesome. Hot reload for the win. Um, so we've got this. We're tracking our current index. Mm -hmm. So I bet somewhere here, let's get rid of this. Go away. Thank you. We are, uh, here is where we do if index is zero, um, it's top stories. Otherwise, we're going to have to change this to if index is one, and then else we're going to do something. Um, and this is going to be show our prefs. Mm -hmm. OK. So let's see if this works. OK, so this highlights. This is fine. It does do slightly weird things like change to new stories when I hit preferences. Um, oh, we got no index one. We do that index two. We'll sort that out in a minute. Um, so what are we going to do? I thought that we would play with, because I was just looking at it a minute ago, show modal bottom sheet. That's Which you have to say slowly, yeah. because if you say it too fast, it comes out garbled. Okay. And what this is going to do, this is going to give us a, a modal bottom sheet, unsurprisingly, and it will pop up from the bottom mm -hmm. and cover a par portion of the screen, and it will just be a blank canvas on which we can do things. I could create a whole new scaffold and page and yada, 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 yada. I thought we'd do something different, yeah. just because yeah. it's fun to watch us flounder when we play around with things. Um, and I am going to, right, so remember that, 146. Oh. Uh, we are here, um, that is good, and I am going to go down and let's create a, um, let's create a new widget for this. So we have a class, let's create a stateless widget. Maybe you can bring up the uh, show model bottom sheet docs, just while I oh, find yeah, sure. we'll, have, we'll sure. have something to look at, and we'll call this prefs sheet. 
And this is going to, okay, we have our build piece. Um, we might want to pass in our block, which we'll look at in a minute. But mm. what I want to do is I want to call show show bottom sheet. Or show, show modal bottom sheet. Show and then it takes sheets. whatever, if you're going to return a value from it, you'd want to type it. Yep, so if you're going to so return a bool and then put it in the block here, you could actually do that. So I'm actually going to, it's within the widget itself, I can, mm -hmm. I can do all of the changes. Okay. So let's not type it, but we need to have, um, we need to pass it a context. Luckily we have one. Mm -hmm. And we, oh, and we have to. And then a builder for the contents, I believe. Yep, and do I have to call this context, context, I guess. And we're going to have a builder, which mm -hmm. I bet is going to take a context, mm -hmm. and stuff will happen. And it will return a widget. And it will return a widget. Um, return type is a, f return type future isn't a widget. Oh, show mode and bottom sheet. I'm not returning this. What am I doing? There we go. Oh, okay. So we're going to click on this, and this actually isn't going to be a widget. What this is going to be is something different. Mm -hmm. So I am going to get rid of this. I'm just going to I'm going to put it here for the time being. Um, we are going to have void um, uh, show prefs sheet uh, async. Yeah. Blink. Um, and Perfect. I'm going to have to pass in context. I could do this inside the. The, the build method, but it's mm -hmm. already kind of crazy yeah. with um, with its bits and pieces. Mm -hmm. um, and so show model, bo show model bottom sheet is going to have a builder, and a builder expects us to return a widget. So for the time being, I'm going to return center, center text. child <laughs> text preferences. Yay! You should Yay. build like one of those you know, templates into the into the IDE because we all use that so much. I oh, know. Uh, or a progress indicator. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we should have, um, and we can probably actually, because this is all the ways down here, let's just move this um, inside our class just to keep things neater. Mm -hmm. And then what I can do here is else, let's see what happens. Can I call this here? I guess I can. I can do underscore show pref sheet context. So that's, I think you, you're going to have to return some kind of widget from here, though, right? Because that's expecting you to build and return the contents of the screen based on which tab is selected. Let's see. So. Let's do a full restart. It's probably going to hiccup with a few errors. Oh no, this has recovered itself. So what happens when I, when I press this? Oh, there we oh. go. All right, it rolled with it. Yeah, it's, okay, so there we go. It's super dark and ugly, so maybe I should do this. Um, I'm going to wrap this in new widget, and because this is actually rooting to somewhere new, I've lost my scaffold. So if I make this a scaffold, Yay! <laughs> Thank totally you. Totally worked. Awesome. Yeah, great. I guess I actually have to make you do something, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what can we do here? Right, I want to give it my, what did you call it? A prefs block? Uh, it's prefs state is the, uh, the block would be prefs block, yeah. Yeah, because we're going to need access to the block because we're okay. going to be listening to things. So I'm going to call this uh, block. Um, so we have that. Um, and let's now wrap our Let's, let's just do uh, something super simple to make sure things are working. Um, we're going to wrap this in a stream builder, which is going to take a stream, which is going to be our blob block. Thank you. Dot. And it's the current prefs. Is the, we'll get you the current prefs. Yep. That'll get you the prefs state. This is mm -hmm. like. Yep. Always nice to keep these typed. Builder. Context. Snapshot. Thank you. Always takes me a second. <laughs> it does. And I can do this. Um, let's just make sure I'm getting my, where does this go? That goes there, so that goes there. 
And this goes here. And what is it complaining about? Oh, it's complaining about what am I missing? I'm missing this because but I also forget to put my uh, yeah. commas in. This oh, it might be yeah, yeah the return. return. And it's going to be return. I'm going to do cool ternary stuff. Dot data. Um, <laughs> no, dot has data. Mm -hmm. uh, is going to be uh, text uh, snapshot dot data or text. Okay, I need to hot restart. Oh, oh, no, I have errors. Because ah. this should be the uh, prefs block. Oh, that's block. right, it's looking for the block. And so that'd be, I think, widget.prefs block. Thank you. It's not in the state object. And, and that should be lowercase. Yes. Oh, good. So, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Sure. I was expecting it to say true or false, too. I was too. expecting it to say true or false, too. But, you know, this is a good sign. Um, yeah, what do you want to put? You, you could put a material switch there. You could put a couple of buttons and just have yep. one for on, one for off. So what do we want to do here? We want to... Um, let's take a look at... What do we have? We have a toggle switch, right? Yeah, you can do a switch, a material switch. Uh, let's look for material... Oh, it's just called switch, I think, uh, the name of the widget. I was just working with these for um, Cupertino, so I know that Material they, design switch. Yeah. Toggle the on-off state for a single setting. Is mm -hmm. there a handy cut and paste? Curses. Uh, um, the two okay. things that you would use, there's um, there's value, which tells you um, when you build it what the value of the switch should be, yep. whether it's on or off. And then on changed is the other one, Okay. Uh, which is the callback you get when someone toggles it. So let's async. I'm going to type this because otherwise it's going to get confused. And this is what this is a pref state. Mm -hmm. So that's okay now. Yep. And this is, of course, now we could do pref state dot data dot um, show web view. Dot two string. Everyone, j don't do dot two string all the time. Just string interpolation is your friend. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I initially hated this, and now I love it. Where I just do this. I always forget forget that it's there too. Things work. Yeah. Now, this is only going to refresh when I update it. True. Yay. Is it true? Yay. OK. <laughs> um, so we are going to, um, we are going to, uh, let's start to build out our widgets. So what are we going to have? I'll do it in here, because I don't want to be messing with uh, my formatting. So we have a uh, final switch equals this could be a widget. I think, I think, and, and I, I was just working with this with Cupertino, which mm -hmm. works the same way, which is why it's fresh in my mind. I think you can just return a switch here, just straight up return one, and then the value parameter, you would give it snapshot has data. Um, OK, let's try that then. So I get a switch. Let's see what switch takes. Yeah. We are required a value. Mm -hmm. So value is going to be the non-stringed version of that. Mm -hmm. And then you'd have on changed as the and other parameter you got to give it. We're going to, let's get this down here. On changed is going to be a, probably a closure, right? Mm -hmm. So it'll give uh, you the Boolean for whether it's on or off. So this is, um, I was going to call it state. That's overloaded. Um, uh, 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 show x. Um, unchanged, I'll just call it B for the time being. There you go. And when it's changed, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to do a, a block dot. This is the input, right? Yes, this is the input. So it's show set, web press. Show web press. Sync and then you do add. add. Yep. Yep, I think that's the business. This. No. Uh, uh, B. Yeah. Mm hmm. So if it has data, we get the switch. If there's no data, 
It's nothing. Yeah, you know? I mean, I'll, you, you you would grey out the switch. Mm -hmm. I think um, uh, will be one of what you want to show. But in, in reality, the chances of this being nothing are, are pretty much zero because he says that. Um, so let's take a look and see what happens. Yeah, we have a web view. Okay. We sure. You got a switch. This is the world's greatest preference pane. <laughs> the magic switch. That's it. We shall throw the magic switch. Now we'll find out if my block actually works. And then we'll go back up here. Oh, thank God. Well done. That was well done. That was off the cuff, by the way. And I would have been messing around with switch if he hadn't guided me. Yeah. Now, clearly, you're going to want to make this nicer in terms of, you know, putting a nice label on it. Yeah. Um, yeah but was... the great thing here is, is that you can just start filling this. You can put four mm -hmm. or five switches. You can lay them out in a nice column. Mm -hmm. um, you can... Um, and how were you dismissing that? Were you just tapping oh, up above? Because it's modal. Ah. It's all built in, so I think I can, I can drag. Oh, that's, that's Ooh, pretty slick. Look at that. Look, it even fades in and out. All kinds of material oh, secrets that I know. The joys of widgets. Um, so this is this 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 is nice. So you would basically what I would do now is I would have another stateless or stateful widget, which is just the design of my preferences page, mm -hmm. which I would wrap in a scaffold. And you could have it as a separate page because this is just routing. But I kind of like the way of doing this. This is this is kind of mm. neat. Um, I can make this look prettier, but I think we're in a good spot. People don't need to see yeah. me add text labels. Yeah, I think we've been going for almost, if not more than an, uh, than an hour here. So we definitely got our, our episode in for today. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's that's some shared preferences. That's show modal bottom sheet. Mm -hmm. Got a little of that in there. Um, we got some switch action going. Yeah, uh, and we answered some questions. Please post some more questions in the comments. Uh, we love seeing those. We love responding to them here. This mm -hmm. is a, a, one of our chances to talk directly to people. Um, and yeah, I think that's it for this episode. Yes, thank you very much. All right, see you next time.